Shaw TV on location. We're actually in Regina. We're in one of their public libraries, and I'm joined by a very special guest, uh, Mr. Jeff Richards, who's a Regina native. Uh, and Jeff, you're going to be performing in Moose Jaw on March 15th for an evening out. Uh, what is that, and what's it for? It's a, it's a fundraiser, and we're raising money for the, uh, it's, it's put on by the Elks. We're raising money for the pediatric center at the new hospital, so a great cause. Yeah, so people come out, buy tickets, have a fun evening out, and get to see you perform. Absolutely. Now, Jeff, you're considered, I guess, uh, uh, Canada's hottest mentalist, but I I know you're, the things are starting to change. People that want to come to the show, uh, we were talking before the camera got turned on, difference between magician, hypnotist, and mentalist, and you said the biggest misconception is usually with a hypnotist. Absolutely. Uh, kind of do, do a comparison of what you do versus, I guess, the other guys. Sure. Well, anytime anybody does anything that's sort of weird, it all kinds of get, it gets grouped into the same category. Uh, but with hypnosis, essentially they're controlling your thoughts. With, with what I do, with mind reading, I'm reading your thoughts. I'm getting inside of your head and, uh, and figuring out exactly why you think what you think and maybe even telling you some things that you didn't think I knew about you. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Jeff, you know, is the show very interactive? What can people expect if they come to see you that night? It's incredibly interactive. Every single point when I'm on stage, I'm essentially inside the minds of the audience members. So you can be there that night, sitting in the crowd, thinking you're not going to be part of the show, and all of a sudden I'll be picking up on something that you're thinking in your mind. Maybe the name of your first crush or the name of a, a pet that you had growing up or whatever it might be, and I'm pulling those thoughts from you, and now you're on stage with me. So it's incredibly interactive. People need to uh, be ready to interact and to also be entertained. Uh, I can actually show you a little bit of a demonstration, if that's okay. I, I, why not? <laughs> now, um, just I, I very briefly just sort of met you, and a lot of what I do is based around understanding how people work, how your mind works. Some of it's based in the psychic, but some of it's just pure psychology. So I'd like to try something that's psychological with you for a second, okay? Uh, so, so here's what we're gonna do, Chris. I uh, actually, let's, let's try it with this. I've got a little paper cup here. Uh, can you just take that? And I've got a plastic cube. Now this actually belongs to one of my children. They probably have 40 or 50 of these stacked all over our house. It's a little building blocks. Now over the years, I've realized that I can watch somebody interact with this little toy and I can learn a lot about how their mind works. So I'm gonna ask you to do something for me here, Chris. I'm gonna hand this cube to you. I'm gonna put the mic down. Sure, I'm gonna hand this cube to you and I'm gonna need you to make a choice, make a selection. And just drop it inside the cup so you can see that color and that color alone. So for example, there, you would have picked green, okay? Mm -hmm. So whatever you want, you can make your choice. There's six colors on the cube. I'm gonna turn away so I can't see exactly what you're doing. I'll actually put my hand across my eyes right there. Go ahead and make your choice, Chris. Can I just put the color up? Yeah, put the color up so you can see it and just focus on it for me, please. Okay. Now, the reason we use the cup is to isolate it so that I can't see the other colors on the cube, but also so that you can focus on one color. Just put your hand on top of the, on top of the cup there, and I'm going to turn back around. Okay, so you have one color in your mind presently right now, yes? Very good. Uh, just focus on it. Just sort of keep it locked right here. Like it's, it's almost, imagine like it's written between the two of us. Now most people, nine times out of 10, will go with red the first time they're asked to make the choice with the cube. But you're a little bit different. You walk to the beat of a different drum in a way. I don't think you probably would have with red. You probably also wouldn't have gone with black. You're almost sort of like a beacon. Um, and, and just by nature of what you do, working in TV and sort of hosting this program, you're a beacon. People are sometimes attracted to you because you've got sort of this bright, vibrant personality. So you very likely would have been drawn to the color yellow to the begin with. Yes, what color do you have in your mind? That's Yellow, okay. Can we try this just one more time? Absolutely. I'm gonna turn around once more. Second time now. So the first time, it's, it's again, it's just sort of meeting you, knowing you, looking at uh, sort of what you're wearing, how you carry yourself, the brief interaction that we just had. Ready to go, Chris? Hand on top. One second. Sure, yeah, make your choice. Sure. Hand on top, Chris? Yep. Good. And so you went with yellow the first time around. Now, the interesting thing about people who go with yellow the first time around is that chances are the second time around, they're gonna default back to some of those patterns, some of those original things that I said, most people will go with this, most people will go with that. Nine times out of 10, a lot of men, when asked to pick a color on that cube, they'll go with red. The second choice is almost always the same though, regardless of what the first one is. You went with blue the second time around, didn't you? <laughs> blue? Yes, okay, very good. Now, let's try something else, just a little bit more complicated. Uh, Do you play cards? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ever play poker? Yeah. Now, in the game of poker, Chris, there's something called a tell. Mm -hmm. It's a nonverbal physical clue that you give off that will essentially tell people whether you've got a good hand or a bad hand. Maybe if you're going to go all in on the next round, it can give you a whole host of information. The problem is, tells exist in our everyday lives. They exist in our interactions with our spouses. They exist at the workplace. We're always giving off more information than we mean to. So, Chris. I'm gonna to try to tap into one of your tells. All Can right. we try this? Yeah, Let's give this a shot. I have a deck of playing cards here. 
And I carry these with me simply because it's easy in this way to have 52 random objects that I can have somebody think of at any given point in time. Chris, do me a favor. Take the cards and uh, just give them a quick mix. Shuffle them up in your hands. You can put the mic down if you want. Just yeah, shuffle them up. And when you feel like they're shuffled, go ahead, just have a look at them. You're going to notice some cards that you'll recognize. They're spread throughout the deck there. They're in a uh, sort of a random pattern order there. Uh, Chris, do me a favor. I'll take the deck back from you. And uh, I'm just going to spread the cards right here. Take one finger, touch the back of any one of those cards, whichever one you like. I'll look away. Okay. This one right here? Yep. Pull it out. Have a look at it. I don't want to see it. I'm going to turn away. I don't want to see a thing. Put it back down. It just sure. Take the whole deck, actually. Just mash them all back together. Now, this is not magic. I'm not a magician. A magician would take the cards back from you at this point, Chris, and use sleight of hand to sort of determine where inside the deck your card is. We're not going to do that. You're going to mix them all back up, please. And then just uh, slide them back inside the box when you feel like they're well mixed. Excellent. Only time I touch them is right now, then they go inside of the pocket. Okay, so you right now have a card that's sort of tucked inside of your mind. Just focus on it for me, please. And again, just sort of imagine like it's written right here between the two of us. Okay, now I'm not going to tell you exactly how this is done, but right now I'm paying attention to every clue that you're giving off. I'm watching your eyes, listening and watching your breathing, looking at the pulse line in your neck, maybe if there's a bead of sweat rolling down your brow, whatever it might be, he's giving off so much information right now. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to say a word. Do not respond yes or no. Just look at me. Red. Say nothing out loud. Black. The card that he has in, in your mind right now, that card, feels like a red card to me, yes? Actually, no, a black one. It's a black card, yes? Yeah. Okay. It's either a club or a spade. Say nothing out loud, but it's either a club or a spade. Obviously, those are the black cards. Corners of your mouth sort of went up a bit when I said spade. Nothing when I said clubs. It's a spade, yes? Yes, okay, very good. It's either a number card or picture card. Number cards, obviously, either two through ten. Picture cards are the jack, queen, king, and ace. Number card or picture card, say nothing out loud. Just think in your mind whether it's a number card or a picture card. Again, nothing out loud, just think it's right here. That feels like a number card, yes? It can be odd or even, just think odd or even. That time it was the eyes again. Oh, he had to go back and he's actually, he's remembering or he's thinking, was it odd or was it even? You didn't forget the number, did you? You have it in your mind? It's an odd number, yes? Focus on the number, three, five, seven, nine. Those are the odd ones, three, five, seven. You blinked when I said seven, it's a seven of spades, yes? Yes? <laughs> Give him a nice big round of applause if he were here, obviously. We, it's just the two of us, but okay, let, let's try this one more time. That was. I felt you when you when you mentioned that I blinked on the seven. Yeah. I realized I did it after you said it. That's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. Can we try this one more time? Absolutely. Because obviously, Chris, we took these cards, you took them, you shuffled, you mixed them up. Here's what I need you to do now. I need you to reach into that deck and I need you to pull out four or five cards. Just grab a chunk of cards immediately. Put okay. them behind your back. Start mixing them up. Okay. okay. So just four or five. Just just grab a chunk from wherever you like. Grab them. Sure. Put them behind your back and just start to just start to shuffle. Start to mix those up right there for me, please. I'll get rid of these. Okay. Um, can you just tuck them into, into your front pocket for a second there? I don't want to see um, anything that you have with you, any of the cards. Everything's sort of hidden away. A number of years ago, I was performing at the Casino Regina, and I did this exact same test for the group that I was working for. Mm -hmm. After the fact, I was actually brought into a meeting with uh, one of the heads of security and the entertainment worker <laughs> at the time, and I was informed that I was no longer allowed to play table games at the casino. This is exactly why. Picking up on someone's tells in a table game, a game of cards, that's simple. Mm -hmm. But when you can bridge and go beyond just the psychological and go to something that's a little bit more psychic, so me now tuning into your thoughts potentially, that's a little bit scary. I'm going to turn my back. I'm going to pick up my clipboard here. And I'm going to start to take just some notes in a second here. I need you to bring those cards out, and you're going to just sort of hold them in front of you, looking at the faces of the cards. Run your eyes across the spread from left to right, left to right, over and over again. And I'm going to start to name some of the cards that I'm seeing, that I'm feeling. Okay. If I name a card that you have in your hand, I want you obviously to show the camera and acknowledge that I've, I've revealed at least one of those cards that you grabbed from that random assortment. Okay. okay. So here we go turn my back to you. I can't see a thing that's going on behind me. <clears throat> okay, you have the card spread in front of you there, Chris? Yep. Do me a favor, just, just step a little bit closer and just sort of put them so that they're sort of, uh, so to the point where I can't actually turn and I can't see what's going on there. Um, you've, you can see all the faces of the cards right now from left to right, correct? Yeah. 
Now I want you to focus on the colors for just a brief moment. Focus on the colors, the reds, the blacks, the numbers, the letters. See everything there. And I'm going to start to jot down some of what I'm seeing here. OK, very good. Um, wow. Excellent. Keep going all the way down. What do you have, Six, five, six cards in your hand, Chris? Six. Six cards. Perfect. Good. Just focus on those, on those six cards, one card at a time. All the way through from beginning to end. Fantastic. Good. I just got a big impression of one. It feels like a red card to me, Chris. Um, if I name the card, pull it out of the spread, show the camera, it feels like a red card. It feels like a low red card, lower than five, four, three, like two, like two, like red, not hearts, but like diamonds, like the two of diamonds. Mm -hmm. You have two of diamonds in your hand right now, Chris. Pull it out, show the camera. Keep going. We're going to keep going all the way down here. There's another card that I'm seeing. This is another red card. This time it feels like a heart, actually. It feels like a heart. It feels like a heart. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of hearts. You have an eight of hearts in your hand, Chris. Hold up the eight of hearts. Very good, very good. We're going to keep on going all the way down that spread. Uh, wow, this is another card that I'm seeing. This one actually feels like a black card this time. And I'm seeing sort of the point. It's almost like a shovel, like a spade, like a spade in front of me. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doesn't feel like a number card. Feels like jack, queen, king, or eight. I'm going to go back to Jack. Jack of Spades, you have a Jack of Spades in your hand, Chris? Yes, yes he does. Fantastic. Jack of Spades in his hand. Um, now, there's, there's only a few more cards left here um, to, to work with. What do you have, three, four cards left, Chris? Three. Three cards left. I need you to focus on those three cards. Again, one card at a time, just sort of see them all. Uh, one and one at a time. Here we go. We're going to keep on going all the way through. Yeah, excellent. That was a good one. Fantastic. And I'm just going to stop you right there, because I'm going to double back. When I said two, three, four, five, six earlier, mm -hmm. one card sort of jumped out at you. It's not six, but it's close to six. It's like five, it's like five, it's like a black card. Doesn't, it's not a spade, it's a club. Five, five of clubs, sir? Five of clubs, Chris? Yeah. Five of clubs in his hand, good. Now the last two cards you have there, make it so you can only see the face of one of those two cards, Chris. Just look at one of them. Just look at one of them? Just look at one of them. Focus on that one. That feels like a red card, yes? No. It's a black one, then. Yeah. It's a talent I have. <laughs> Focus on the color just very briefly again. And now focus on the suit of the card. That feels like a club, yes? Yeah. That feels like a number card. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to go back. Two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, four. Black card, club, four of clubs. Yes, sir. Yes. And that last one then, that feels like a big card. Is that the ace of diamonds? <laughs> it is? Yes. So that's a little sample. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Awesome. Uh, Jeff, uh, I know you have a website. Yes. Before, first off, you know where people can get tickets to see him. Absolutely. Honestly, that was <laughs> minutes. <laughs> We'd only talked for a few minutes and no idea what was going Jeff, that was absolutely mind blowing. Thank you. Uh, how do people get tickets to see you on March 15th? How to check them out? Flat Top Garage in Moose Jaw or from the Elks office as well. They can visit there. And I know, Jeff, uh, I was on your website earlier. You do have a website. How do people find you? They can find me at jeffrichards.ca or on Twitter at Hot Mentalist. So those are the two ways. Jeff Richards, Regina Native. That was yes. excellent, Jeff. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. Be sure to check out his website and be sure to get tickets March 15th. All funds going to the pediatric uh, new unit at the hospital. Thanks so much, Jeff. You're welcome. Thank you.